Hi everyone, this is David Peters from Peters Tax Preparation and Consulting. By far, the biggest tax law change in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was the addition of the Section 199A QBI deduction. Now, the QBI deduction is incredibly complex, but in this video, we just wanna give kind of an overview of the deduction itself. Generally speaking, businesses fall into one of two categories. They're either a standalone business, or they are a pass-through business. If you're a standalone business, essentially what that means is, is that that business takes, uh, from a tax perspective, is going to take all of its items of income and deduction on its own return, and they're gonna pay taxes at their own rate. A pass-through entity, though, works a little bit different. A pass-through entity is something like a partnership, a sole proprietorship, an S-corporation, um, something like that. For a pass-through entity, what happens is, is the items of income and expense, they pass through to the business owner. The business owner then takes those items of income and deduction on their personal return, and they're gonna pay taxes on those items at their personal rate. The QBI deduction is based off of pass-through income, okay? So items of income and deduction, they pass through to the business owner. The deduction is calculated off of qualified business income. Well, what's qualified business income? Well, what the tax reform bill says is that qualified business income is not investment income. So basically, the way that I think about that is, is that businesses essentially have two different types of income. They have operating income, that's what they get from selling their product or uh, selling their service. And then they have investment income, and that's the money that they get from interest and dividends and capital gains. That's the money that they get from actually investing in the markets. So if the bill says that it's not investment income, well, then that means that it's basically operating income. So don't hold on to that definition really, really tight because that's not actually what the bill says. The bill doesn't say operating income. All the bill says is that it's not investment income. The QBI deduction is a 20% deduction, up to 20% of qualified business income as deductible. So if I'm a partner in a partnership and I have $100,000 of income flowing through to me, well, then the QBI deduction is up to $20,000 on my personal income tax return. Now, there's income limitations that are gonna tell me whether or not I'm gonna be able to take the full 20% or I'm gonna to have to take something less. If you're married filing jointly and you have taxable income of $315,000 or higher, well, then your deduction is probably gonna be something less than 20%. If you're something else, so for example, maybe you're single or had a household, and your taxable income is above $157,500, well, then your deduction may be something less than 20% as well. So once you get kind of up above those thresholds, the uh, actual calculation of the deduction starts to become a lot more complicated. If you're interested in that, please take a look at my next video, which is gonna actually take you through the nuts and bolts of the calculation itself. However, at least for right now, just know what the QBI deduction is, 20% of qualified business income, which is essentially flow through operating income. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, feel free to hit the like button. And if you wanna be notified every time we come out with a new video, be sure to hit that bell icon. For more information, visit us at davidpeterstax.com. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.